Some of you have been asking, how do I have more patience with my child? Vicki and I have some ideas that we're going to share with you with some powerful tips. So Vicki, what are the chances that kids are going to try our patience? 100%. You think? <laughs> yeah. It's going to happen. So you're not alone. And right. I think I want to remind you that you're not as impatient as you feel. You're not as crazy as you're made out to be sometimes. You know, sometimes I, I am surprised when my kids think back when I ask them about, well, how did you experience this or that from me as a mom? Because I feel like in my mind, I was really impatient a good chunk of the time. And they don't mm. remember it that way. So I think sometimes we're better at regulating those emotions turning into behaviors than we think. But that being said, we do need a little help. Do Everybody you, needs help with that. Do you remember before you had kids, how patient <laughs> you were? <laughs> how much you knew about child development and parenting. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of funny. We tease our own kids a little bit now that they're grown up and they're raising our grandkids, how much they know about mm -hmm. parenting. And you do. I mean, honestly, as you go into it, you don't even know what you don't know. And you remember how patient you used to be? And then you had kids. And it's like, I didn't know I had such a hair trigger. <laughs> right? Exactly. It brings it out. So... Let's normalize that for you a little bit. You're not as crazy as you feel. You're not as impatient as you seem. You're probably handling things a whole lot better than you feel like you are. Does that help a little? I hope we can just throw you a bone there. Vicki, do you remember years ago we read a book together called The Knight in, in Rusty, Rusty Armor. Armor? It was just a small little book, but we loved it. Quick little read, and there was a quote that stuck out in my mind. I probably won't even get it completely accurate. But it was something like this. The more we learn to accept rather than expect, the less frustration and disappointment we feel. And I think one of the things that brought it about is that in that story it talked about when a squirrel doesn't just shake its head and get mad at the skies for raining. It just goes, oh, it's raining today and goes about its business. Right. Because you know? if you expect it to be perfect, beha perfect weather the very day you wanted to go on a picnic, then you've set yourself up for disappointment. Right. Accept and expect sound very similar in the English language, but they're very different words. And when our expectations are unmet, we feel frustration. And disappointment. And disappointment, and that can lead to anger. So when we're developing patience, Adjusting our expectations is probably one of the most powerful things that we can do because we can't always adjust our experience. In other words, it's going to rain, right? <laughs> Your kids are going to do certain things. They're kids. That's what kids do. If you expect that to happen, you're going to feel a whole lot less frustration. And we can equate that to a high level of patience. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there too. Expecting from ourselves as well. Okay, because a lot of the times we're yes. talking about thank you. Bring your expectations of what your kids will or won't do at this point mm -hmm. into check. But I think we also need to do that with our own emotions. So if I lost my cool for a minute, mm -hmm. then I go, okay, I lost my cool for a minute. You I mean when that. instead yeah. of if? Yeah, that's true. So you just accept that you lost it for a minute and you process it and you practice it in your head and you move on forward. One of the yes. things I hear the most with parents is how they're very, they've lost patience with themselves for being impatient. Which gets really loopy. <laughs> but it's so common. And accept that. Don't let it tip you over too much. Of course you're gonna lose your cool from time to time. Welcome to earth. That's how we roll here. Without letting that tip you over, adjust your expectations expect to blow it. Mm -hmm. Expect that your kids are going to blow it too. And then you have a whole lot more patience when it happens. Vicki, maybe we don't have to go here, but I'm going to. I, I have to. Okay. All right. What is your job as a parent? If you've been on this channel very long, you know exactly what the answer to that is. If you're new here, heads up. Your job is to love them. 
no matter what and even if. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Yes, we will continue to repeat that. The beatings will continue until the morale improves. <laughs> so just, sorry, but get your head wrapped around this because as parents, we get deceived and tricked and sometimes uh, deluded into thinking our job is to make sure that they fill in the blanks, mm -hmm. whatever, make sure that they obey, for example. Make sure that they behave. Make sure that they're happy. Make sure that they're safe. Make sure that they make sure that they... How frustrating could that be? Even though I may not know you personally, I'm pretty darn sure that you are terrible at that job. The, you know, the one where you have to make sure that they whatever. <laughs> I thought it was like the love job. I'm like, wait, what? No, that one you <laughs> rock at. You've got that. I mean, think about it. You do. You love them, don't you? No matter what. And even if, mm -hmm. even if they disappoint you, will you love them? Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Even if they hate you, uh, they'll throw Three that at today. you. Occasionally, right? right? Are you going to love them anyway? Yes, yeah, see, you've got your job. But the other one, where you have to make sure that they behave, make sure that they do this, do that, be happy, whatever. You're terrible at that job. You're fired. And that's always going to cause you impatience because it's never going to happen on the timeline you think it should happen if that's what your right. agenda is. Did you hear me fire you just now? You're fired. That's not your job. Get back to your job, which is to love them no matter what and even if. Now check it out. Psychologically, when we make that shift in our mind, what happens to our patients? Magic. <laughs> See, that's why it's so important. But not only that, you'll show up differently for your kids and you'll be able to have a more profound influence on them because you're focused on your job, which is Vicki? To love them no matter what and even if. Love it. Yeah. Yes. A little context perhaps. And Vicki, you know this about me because you've lived with me for how long now? <laughs> I get a little sappy. And I get nostalgic and my daughter laughs at me because I cry in certain videos and stuff. And we're not going to get into all that today. But here's the thing. Kids don't keep. Mm -mm. They grow up and they become adults. And they're not nearly as cuddly. They're still awesome. We love our adult children. And you know what? Grandbabies are a really great reason to not wipe out your kids. <laughs> exactly. Okay? Just saying. Vicki, I remember... Uh, you used to have a plaque on the wall that mm -hmm. had a little saying on it. Do you My remember the one I'm talking about? My mother gave it to me about? early, early in our marriage. I think maybe about when our first child was born. Yeah. And it said... <clears throat> You've got it here. Yeah, I, I pulled it up. It says, cleaning and scrubbing can wait till tomorrow. For babies grow up, we've learned to our sorrow. So quiet down cobwebs, dust go to sleep. I'm rocking my baby and babies don't keep. Mm. I think that that just kind of brings about that there everything that we're experiencing that we're feeling uh, impatient or frustrated mm -hmm. about is going to pass. The time will yes. pass. And in the end, the most important thing is that relationship you've built with your child at the, right. on the other side of time. Where's your relationship? And so if you can kind of keep that in mind, that's why we harp over and over again about the love if yes. their memory is the love the majority of their memory is the love then you will be at a place where you can feel pretty good about and you get to carry that peace mm -hmm. into the years after your kids have grown up too. keep that in perspective because everything that we're dealing with is so frustrating right now is in fact temporary and the relationships i think will carry the day Thank you for joining us and for being a positive, conscientious parent. We have a great community of parents that are coming together at the Parenting Power Up. You can join us. ParentingPowerUp.com is the website. Come over there where we have some amazing resources for you, including a free training that you can get involved with.